Mercury retrograde is Mercury retrograde is here, and even though it's not the end of the world, I want to go over some general do's, don'ts, and how this is happening in your life for your sign. So I'm going to run through the meaning, do's and don'ts, survival guide kind of thing, and then also at the end, I will be going through all signs for how to expect what's happening in your life during this. First of all, we need to understand what Mercury is, then what a retrograde is, then what that means in our life. So Mercury is communication, intellect, travel, putting things from one place to another. It is transit, it is commuting. It's the little like Hermes guy, you know what I mean? We get this, it's a little fucking twink, like Tinkerbell, Firefly, whatever, commuting between things. So in the world, it generally represents travel, commerce, communication, logic, uh, being conversational, getting from one place to another. Planets are retrograde quite literally when from our perspective on Earth, when we look up, it appears as if it's going backwards. Planets can never actually go backwards, obviously, but the way that different planetary orbits lines up means that when you are on a planet, other planets can appear retrograde because of different orbital speeds. It's kind of like if you're going super quickly, even if something's going like the same direction, it might seem like it's going backwards because you're going faster. That's what a retrograde is. Every planet, not the sun or the moon, but every planet will appear retrograde at some point or another because of our speed as something orbiting the sun. What does that mean symbolically? It represents an inversion or a reversal of what that planet represents. So if Mercury represents communication and travel, it represents an inversion or reversal or inconveniences and mishaps around communication and travel mainly. So for example, you might find that your flight is more delayed, that there's issues with transit more so than not, that you're more inclined to be private rather than share or communicate openly. You might also find that you want to like redo your room or clean your closet or revise something you've already written. So in no way is it bad or unwanted. We always need to like take inventory. However, it's preferable for a planet not to be retrograde, obviously. It does not mean that this is something to really terrorize over or really be scared of. If anything, Mercury retrograde is like stubbing your toe and realizing you need a manicure. It is not like getting your arm chopped off and having a permanent uh, amputated limb kind of thing. There are, and I want to say this like really fucking clearly, there are a million times more difficult things in astrology. It has been memed to filth because it happens three times a year for three weeks each, so it is most common. And because it is talking about technology, it definitely is something that shows up more like slight inconveniences over time for everyone. Everyone, sorry, I'm choking on my words, which usually means I have something important to say. Whenever I choke on my words in a video and literally the saliva gets all like weird, it means that the video usually blows up literally like time and time fucking again. So yeah. Anyway, Mercury retrogrades represent travel delays, communication issues, tech issues, also a great time to revise, rework, or re-examine things that you've already written or worked on. So instead of trying to push through the, uh, you could say the fatigue or the resistance in the world, it's a great time to revise what you've already written or already done. I am in the process of many things where I in no way can do that, but I'm just keeping a sense of humor and pushing through anyway. So general do's and don'ts, and these are all so loose because this is like a minor inconvenience. It's kind of like if you're flying a plane and you hit turbulence, to make everyone comfortable, you could like go down to turbulence cruising speed and you won't really notice it. But if you really need to get to your destination, you power through and maybe you tell people like, I'm sorry if you hit your head on them. You know what I mean? So it's not the end of the world, not the end of the world, nor is it doom if you cannot avoid starting shit. What's, what this time is good for, this is so simple. Like I already said, revising, going back and redoing things, avoiding super new public endeavors. Generally not the time. I cannot avoid a lot of this. I can never fucking avoid this because my life is go, go, go. I don't take any time to rest, relax, like that's pussy shit. Go in my comments and yell at me about that comment. Um, it is not as ideal of a time to sign contracts, move into a new apartment or lease. I've had to do that every single time, so it's not the end of the world. Um, it's not an ideal time to throw an event that you want to be like a huge clear impression because when Mercury retrograde is over and Mercury turns around and goes direct, there's usually a truth or a clarity that comes out that may mean that the hard work during that period was not the way it was not the vibe so if you for example write a book 
and you finish it and you're like shopping it around during Mercury Retrograde, you might get a ton of feedback that leads you to change it. And then afterwards you're like, shit, I shouldn't have changed all that. Um, it's things like that. Or if you're, I don't know, like releasing music, you could find that there's an error in your song and the production or something and you have to like re-release. That's a good example of it. By no means does it mean that you cannot have a constructive Mercury Retrograde. I'm sure there are people in the comments who are like, I feel so clear headed, good for you. It's probably due to something else. Even though people with retrograde planets tend to feel more comfortable during these times because they already think a little bit wacky. Um, Mercury retrograde people tend to think differently or have initial ways in life like learning disabilities or like speaking things that lead them to learn how to read, write, speak a little differently. It's not a bad thing by any means. Like a quarter of the population is going to have Mercury retrograde. So it's not the end of the world. Um, my, my Mercury stationed direct the day I was born. So if I had been born a day earlier, it would have been retrograde, but it was direct the day I was born. Which, if you didn't know, planets that are stationing direct or retrograde are the most intense that they can be, um, which is probably why everything I say erupts in flames and I think I'm just being normal and everything is highly inflammatory. So Mercury retrograde is a good time to go within, to be more private. I know that I post less during Mercury retrograde because things are misconstrued much easier, so not that I care at this point, it's like a hobby of mine to see what can be taken out of context. But, I mean, I just try to avoid, like, like horrible situations. I don't go out of my way to post anything that's like, oh, this is going to be... Actually, no, Alyssa Sharp and I are filming a video. Uh, we're meeting in person and spending the day together and filming videos. Those videos, I know, are just going to be, like, intentionally inflammatory, and that's fine because we have, we have no chill. Uh, but Alyssa's a friend. So all of you in the comments thinking that I have a video disagreeing with her, no, we literally fucking agree. We're talking about different things. I love how everyone assumes that we're always mad at each other. Like, no, we are literally, like, supporting... We are literally friends, and we make fun of how people always assume... That whatever we're mass hated mass jealous people whatever um so for each of the signs this is happening in capricorn this particular mercury retrograde is conjunct venus which shows positivity creativity and values being re-examined in a good way and also it's conjunct pluto which adds intensity drama in psychological crisis so it does seem like a very deep meaningful creative potential mercury retrograde that is extremely serious and meaningful in one area of our life it's not a casual surface mercury retrograde it's usually going to be re-examining values and the creativity in one area of our life. So I'll go through each of the rising signs to understand where this is happening in your chart. Again, this is by rising sign. If you're not aware, we should always be reading our horoscopes by our rising sign, also known as the ascendant, because it literally does not make sense to be reading it from anything else. It does not make it, no, no, no. I'll just, I'll, I'll, I will hard stop, say it makes no fucking sense to read it from derived houses, this, that, no, 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 it, it, rising sign. If you want more clarity on that, you can look up why to read horoscope based on rising sign, why you're reading your horoscope wrong, Marin, I'll link it down below as well. So for Aries risings, this is happening in your 10th house of career and professional life. Um, I'm just going to run through it because you can, uh, this is how I would apply it. Rethinking values and serious commitments or creativity at a really deep level in this area of your life. I'm going to be straightforward and blunt, I'm not going to linger because it's me. So Aries rising, it's in your 10th house of career, professional life. If you're a student or something, it's a lot about your future or your public image online. If you're a Taurus rising, this is in your 9th house of foreign travel, long distance cultures, uh, studying different cultures, or academics and high level study. If you're a Gemini rising, this is in your 8th house of finances, investments, and other people's baggage. Um, so if you're a therapist, it might not be financial. Also, if you're keeping secrets, family secrets, etc., it could be around that. Um, that was a deep one that I just threw in there. Um, if you are a Cancer rising, this is in your seventh house of committed relationships and partnerships. Not necessarily romantic, but committed relationships and partnerships. Could be your lawyer, could be your best friend, could be your husband or wife. If you are a Leo rising, this is in your sixth house of physical health issues, diet, exercise, and wellness if you don't have any health issues, or coworkers or employees, or pets. The sixth house is fucking weird. If you are a Virgo rising, this is happening in your fifth house of romance, creativity, or children. And it could be uh, sometimes like gambling or out of control behavior. Um, if you are a Libra rising, this is happening in your fourth house of family, property, or uh, pro home. Family, property, home. The foundations of your life. If you are a Scorpio rising, this is in your third house of day-to-day -day communication, productivity, day-to-day -day learning, or like a course you're enrolled in, or commuting in the way that you're like getting to work, or your car, etc. Communication and day-to-day -day travel. Could be posting content, could also be commuting to work. If you're an Aquarius rising, 
this is happening, or sorry, if you're a Sagittarius rising, this is happening in your second house of income, money, and direct spending. So more simple day-to-day -day bank account inflow outflow. If you're a Capricorn rising, represent, uh, you, this is happening in your first house of self, identity, and personal communication. So things that you're saying, your behavior, your personality, you're rethinking, re-examining. If you're an Aquarius rising, there we go, this is happening in your 12th house of mental health, hidden enemies, people could be coming out of the woodwork and you're rethinking trusting people, or inner spiritual journey around like dreams, meditation, psychedelic experiences. And finally, if you're a Pisces rising, this is happening in your 11th, or, uh, 11th house of networking, friends, and social groups that you're a part of. So it's not a bad, it's not an unwanted time, it's just a serious time of rethinking the values that we hold in this part of our life and possibly making them more authentic. So I hope that this helps. Um, we'll give a little bit of a fit check while I put on my shoes. So I am in the big pants little top situation um, while I grab my shoes because we're not going to edit this video. We don't have fucking time for that. I'm wearing these shoes with this. And then I have a matching jacket as well because, um, actually, should I wear these shoes? Do these go with it? These go with it. This is a mood. I could wear black shoes, but I feel these instead. I'm kind of more into it. Um, I am meeting, um, if you guys follow Hot High Priestess on Instagram or TikTok, um, we're meeting in real life for the first time. So we've been mutuals for a minute. This is my outfit, basically. I need to get my jacket. So I hope you can hear me while I go to get my jacket. I am gonna have to edit this video because I just realized that the housekeeper did my laundry, so it was in a different place. Oh, this jacket's wet. Anyway, the jacket matches the shirt. I also have sleeves that are like these sleeves, but warmer in this material and thigh highs with this jacket. So just like this whole print, widow. I mean, I just bought this whole line because I just it's my vibe. Um, so I'm running a little bit late. We're going to get smoothies, uh, but I will see you in the next one. So take care.